Welcome back to another video. This is part two of getting Windows NT 4.0 to run on a blue and white G3. So as you can see here, we are actually running Windows NT natively on the PowerPC hardware. So in part one, we talked about doing some setup, but we hit a roadblock when we got to the installing portion of the, uh, the Windows NT. But working with Wacko, who is the author of this project, he produced a whole bunch of fixes, did some debugs, and we actually have it working. So in this part, I'm gonna take you through the rest of the steps to get your very own Windows NT 4 installed on your blue and white G3. All right, so just to recap what we did in the first video, we needed to have a USB keyboard hooked up though I don't think we necessarily need it, but I've been using it to boot off the CD. And we have the ADB keyboard, which is very important. Um, USB keyboards not supported currently, maybe in a future release, but right now you have to have the ADB keyboard. Uh, of course, I also have my ADB mouse and the USB mouse, but we won't be using that at all for this project. So I left the original Rage 128 video card installed, which is now supported. Um, I disconnected my original hard drive is to not mess with my Mac OS install. And what I had to do was to use the secondary IDE bus, which runs under the board up and into the drive base here to plug in the hard drive. If you plug your hard drive into where your hard drive is normally plugged into, the uh, loader won't be able to see it. You won't be able to use it. So you have to do this. Um, one thing I did learn today is that your hard drive has to be primary on the IDE bus and the CD-ROM has to be secondary. So I took the zip drive out and I put the hard drive where it was. Unfortunately, the zip drive was set to secondary, so the drive didn't work at that point. So uh, I moved it to the top. Uh, I did have to take the uh, jumper off of the factory DVD drive and change it from primary to cable select. Hard drive is already set to cable select. So with those couple of changes, we can then begin with the install. So let me get back to the point where we are booting off of the CD. All right, so I'm holding C down on the USB keyboard to boot up off of the optical drive. So as of the recording of this video, July 15th, the release build is still full of a number of issues. So if you wanted to do this on the 16th, you need to go into the issues page and find the, the uh, test builds that have been produced there. Uh, Wacko said that he's going to be releasing uh, a new version with all these fixes in it shortly, so probably by Wednesday that'll be out, if not sooner. Um, so I just burned, uh, it's like a 4 meg download, I just burned it uh, to, a, to a blank CD here, and we're booting off of that. All right, so um, since I already have NT installed on here, it knows that. Um, but I'm going to wipe that, start from the beginning, so we can go through the whole process. So the first thing we want to do is run firmware setup. And we want to repartition the disk for NT installation. Now if you see a disk here, that means it's good. It's uh, connected to the system, and if you hit enter on it, if this says zero megabytes, that means it's hooked up to the wrong IDE channel. It's hooked up to the primary, but it needs to be hooked up to secondary, so power off your system, move it over. But since I have a, a number here, that means I've got it hooked up correctly. If your drive is primary or secondary on the IDE bus, it'll work fine for this step, but it will break later. So you need to make sure again that your hard drive is primary on IDE secondary. Secondary ID channel, primary hard drive. All right, uh, so you don't want to exceed two gigabytes here. I've been using like between 1500 and 1800 megabytes. So let's just go with uh, 1850 for this one and enter. Now you can create a Mac partition so you can have a dual boot if that's something you want. Uh, again, I'm not interested in that. I've got a whole other Mac hard drive in there I can use if I want to boot that up. So I'm just going to say finish and install and then hit Y to proceed. And this will completely erase the drive so that NT install that I have on there, it's gone now. But we'll get it back, no worries. All right, that's completed and now we hit any key to restart. So again, I'm going to hold down C on the USB keyboard. All right, so now we're booting back up off of the CD. 
All right, and now what we're gonna do is eject that CD. And we will insert our Windows NT 4.0 CD. And hit run a program. So the program we want to run is CD colon backslash PPC backslash setup LDR. And I found that this fails on the first time you try to run it every time. I think it's trying to access the drive too soon before the drive's ready. So we just hit another, hit a key to continue, run a program again, enter the same path. CD backslash colon PPC backslash setup LDR. And then hit enter. And that should take us into the Windows NT installer. And there it is, uh, the Windows NT setup is loading. So when you get to the first screen, it says it can't detect your computer type, which is fine. Uh, you hit enter on other, hit enter to say that you have a disk, and then you pick Power Macintosh G3. I believe these are all currently still the same. There's no difference between these, but I think at some point there may be some divergence there. So for now, I'm just going to pick uh, Power Macintosh G3. All right, and then you get to the point where it's asking about installing additional drivers for mass storage devices. So you hit S to do that, hit enter on other, hit enter to continue, and then enter on the first one, which is the Mac IO IDE controller. And now we need to install the second one as well. So I hit S for a second device, enter on other, enter for the disk, and then down to Power Mac General HID and storage. And we'll hit enter on that. So we've got our two drivers loaded here. So we'll hit enter to continue. And now we need to tell it what type of video adapter is installed in the system. So we select other, hit enter for the disk, and just a single option here of open firmware frame buffer. So this is where we left it in part one. Um, you can see that we're seeing more information here. Previously, after it printed out that first line is where it would halt and the system would just freeze. However, now with some changes, the wackos made were able to actually boot into the setup program. So this is your standard Windows NT setup. Uh, hit enter to continue. We've already specified all of the custom drivers we need, so we'll just hit enter on this one. Now we hit page down a number of times and hit F8 to agree to the terms. So on this screen, we see keyboard is unknown, pointing device is unknown. We need to modify both of those settings. So we go to keyboard, hit enter. And we're gonna say that we have an XDAT or enhanced keyboard. And then for pointing device, we're gonna say no mouse or other pointing device. Don't worry about it, your mouse is gonna work. It's just what we need to select and set up. So once you've made those two changes, go ahead and hit enter on that matches. Now we have all the partitions that the Arc Boot CD has created. Um, so here's my 1850 megabyte partition. So I'll go down to that one and hit enter there. Um, so it's telling me that, you know, this format or the, this partition, this format is not recognized or it's damaged and Windows is going to reformat it, which of course is okay. So we hit C to continue and we can select to format using FAT or NTFS. Um, I prefer NTFS since this is Windows NT. Uh, the difference between FAT and NTFS is NTFS has file system level permissions, whereas FAT is just a bunch of files on a disk with no permissions. So in a corporate environment, it makes more sense to have a, you know, security on files for a, a Power Mac G3 running NT. I don't think it's gonna matter one way or the other. I'm just uh, always of the mindset to run NT with NTFS. So that's why I picked that. So anyway, it's gonna go ahead and format the drive. It takes just a little bit here. It's actually pretty quick. All right, and once your disk is formatted, you get to choose your Windows installation directory. I'm just gonna go with the default of WinNT. And on this screen, it's asking if it wants, if you wanted to perform an exhaustive uh, examination of your drive. Probably you don't need to do that, so just hit escape here to skip that. It's still going to check your drive, just not every sector to make sure everything's working like it's supposed to. So, not a big deal. And now it'll copy all of the uh, Windows NT 4.0 files from the optical media to the drive. All right, so it's finished copying files. Now all we need to do is hit enter to restart. So now I'm not going to be booting off of the uh, CD, the ISO anymore. Um, we have uh, modified the bootloader of the drive itself, and we now have this new option of uh, starting Windows NT Workstation version 4.0, which of course you saw earlier in the video because I already had it installed, but uh, we wiped that one, so now we have rewritten the bootloader 
and we can launch NT from here. Uh, so Windows NT is going to go through and do a couple of things and reboot a couple of times. Um, the first thing it's going to do is find that the file system is fat but flagged as needing to be NTFS. So we will do the NTFS conversion and then reboot. Um, it does note that the process can take some time to complete. Um, on this system though, however, it seems to run fairly quickly. So I'll just take a minute or two here and uh, it reboots. And so again, now it's going to boot off of the hard drive and we can boot up into NT 4.0. So we still have a bunch of setup to do here but we're going to get into the uh, the graphical portion of the Windows NT setup after this next boot. All right, so we're loaded into the NT setup now. So we'll click through this, and you'll notice now that my ADB mouse actually moves the cursor, despite us having said there was no mouse installed. And of course, the uh, USB mouse does nothing as there is no USB support at this time. So we'll hit next. And you can go through here and pick whatever sort of configuration you'd like. I'm um, so just going to go ahead and uh, type in whatever you want here. And now you need an actual product key. So you can go online and uh, just Google this. There's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of uh, ways to find keys. All right, now it's asking for our computer name. Let's call it whatever. And a default administrative password. Um, I would recommend selecting no here since you don't have a floppy drive and that will probably cause it to crash if you try to do that, so hit no on that one. And then since I selected custom install, I can pick out uh, the items that I want from this list here. So I'm just going to do accessories, games, and multimedia. Now it wants to set up networking. There's no network uh, ability yet in this process, so I'm just going to say do not connect to the network at this time. And we'll hit finish here to finish that up. Now the first time I went through this, um, I got a couple of crashes during setup. Setting the time zone, um, including one on here. So I would recommend clicking OK and not making any changes. Um, I tried moving the slider and it crashed. I got a crash here as well. So when this happens, just reboot and try again. Um, it took me... I think two run-throughs of setup to get it to actually complete. So as noted by Wacko, it is a fairly unstable system at this point. Um, I expect there probably will be more stability as things progress, but um, right now there are some blue screens that happen. Um, one other thing that is important to note is that it can cause the power management uh, circuitry of the G3 to become in a bad state as well, which I had happened to me once too. And the fix for that is to turn the system off, unplug all of the cables, and then there's this button here right next to the battery with everything unplugged, push the button once, wait 10 seconds, and then you can plug everything back in and it should be fixed. So what, it, what had happened is I had to uh, hard power it off because um, it got locked up at some point during some install and uh, it wouldn't turn back on. So just resetting the uh, PMU is what I needed to do to get everything working again. So know where that button is, know that you can damage your system if you use it incorrectly, unplug everything, push it once, wait 10 seconds, plug things back in, should be good to go. All right, so I'm just gonna run through the setup and then we'll skip ahead to where I was on the previous uh, install. You can see here it says setup's being restarted, so we'll just get back into it. All right, so hit okay here, and this time it worked. So it might take you a couple of runs, and you get another blue screen like this. Uh, I actually had this blue screen the first time as well. So we'll restart one more time. All right, so I think we're back uh, to where we had previously crashed. So now it's copying the uh, options that I'd selected in the custom install from the optical media to the uh, to the hard drive. All right, and that's it. Windows NT 4.0 is installed. So uh, when I did this the first time, when I hit restart here. It blue screened, so it's probably going to happen again, but um, it set everything, so now it's going to have a five second boot timeout instead of 30 seconds. It's going to boot up. It's not going to restart the setup. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it crashed again. No surprise. So we'll just hit the uh, reset 
switch here. And now we are done with the uh, Windows NT disk, so we can take that out. All right, I see that it didn't actually reset the uh, boot time out to five seconds like it did the first time I installed, but that's, uh, that's not a problem. All right, here we are at the Windows NT 4.0 splash screen. And we have the log on screen, so I'll hit Control Alt Delete. And when I did this the first time, it blue screened. Like we're gonna get in here at least. All right, so that's it. And now we have uh, installed Windows NT 4.0 running on bare metal power PC G3 blue and white. And we get back to the screensaver that I would selected. You can see it doesn't love 3D pipes. But yeah, that's it. Um, so if you're gonna do this yourself, um, obviously you'll need a Windows NT CD, you'll need a blue and white G3, um, you'll need an ID hard drive set to the secondary channel as primary, and probably most important, you're gonna need some patience. This thing crashes pretty frequently, but uh, as you can see here, it is actually usable. So I haven't tried to run too much on here yet, but let's see if we can run uh, 3D Pinball. It seems like we can actually run it. You know, it seems to be running just fine. I think I saw one stutter there, but... Oh, oh another big stutter there. I think I heard the hard drive spin, so... Uh, probably was accessing something. another stutter there, but I don't think I heard the hard drive that time. Yeah, it's playable. Um, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Let's wrap it up. All right, so we successfully installed Windows NT 4.0 on our blue and white G3. And now the question is, what are we going to do with it? Well, for me, it's just kind of cool. You know, I've always been a Mac guy, but uh, I had a job many, many years ago supporting uh, a company with 1,300 employees all running NT 4.0. So I'm very familiar with it and it's kind of nostalgic in a weird way to uh, combine both of these together. This would have been really cool to have in like 1999. I would have blown some minds. Anyway, uh, all credit to Wacko. Wacko is the person that put this all together. So definitely click the link in the description to go to their project on GitHub. And if you're doing this yourself and you have issues, you can submit issues there, but uh, make sure there's not already an existing issue open for your problem, since I think a lot of them have been documented and are documented in the, uh, the known issues here. So here's the drivers. So don't open an issue saying, oh, USB doesn't work. Yeah, it's a known thing. Someday it'll probably happen. And what's the future of this project hold? Well, I'm not sure how far Wacko wants to take it. I'm not sure if this is just kind of a, uh, proof of concept let's see if we can do it or if he's planning to add you know more features and more functionality to it so i guess time will tell anyway thanks for watching my video hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the next one hi guys make sure to like and subscribe and watch more of our videos later bye